public acceptance of the annual 500-mile race as one of the world's great sports spectacles has had a tendency in recent years to overshadow the many contributions made by the Indianapolis Motor Speedway towards the advancement of the entire automotive industry as the racing fraternity prepares for the 32nd annual International Classic at Indianapolis on May 31st. However, reports of several outstanding innovations focus attention on the track again as the industry's great outdoor laboratory. Today, we've asked Wilbur Shaw and Tommy Milton to tell you about that phase of automobile racing. As president and general manager of the Speedway, Wilbur should be able to tell us about all the new important ideas that are to be tested in this year's race. At the top of the list, of course, uh, Stan, is the first steam-powered race car in Speedway history. Full torsion bar spring suspension and tubular steel frame constructions are other 1948 innovations. In fact, the situation is quite similar to that which existed immediately after World War I, and Tommy Milton can tell you more about that than I can. It's been a long time ago, Stan, but Tommy Milton was the first driver to win an Indianapolis race with an eight-cylinder car. Well, that was in 1921, wasn't it, Wilbur? That's right, Stan, and Tommy became the Speedway's first two-time winner when he repeated uh, with a victory in 1923. Well, what can you tell us about some of the revolutionary ideas at that time, Tommy? Ideas that later were incorporated into our everyday passenger cars in order to provide greater efficiency and safety. <clears throat> there were many interesting develops even before my day, Stan. Even before World War I, we had one or two cars at the Speedway with four-wheel brakes, but Wil Wilbur is correct in uh, placing the early 20s as the period of greatest advancement. In addition to the development of eight-cylinder cars, the post years brought the first high-efficiency battery ignition, balloon tires, centrifugal superchargers, which led to the present-day turbo superchargers, front wheel and four-wheel drive cars, ethyl gasoline, hydraulic shock absorbers, universal acceptance of four-wheel brakes, and many other progressive ideas. Well, there haven't been many revolutionary ideas of that nature since 1934-35, have there, Tommy? Uh, in one respect, that's true. There has been very little which the general public has regarded as sensational. Improved fuel, lighter and stronger metals, better spring suspension, and other developments of similar nature lack the, gl the glamour of earlier innovations, but the race this year certainly will be a test for several startling ideas. What can you tell us about that steam car, Wilbur? It's too early to even guess how successful the car will be, Stan, but Don Suttle, the designer, is confident that it will hold its own with the fastest of the conventional cars. There are only 16 moving parts in the entire power plant, and uh, unlikely early experimental steam cars, which required boilers, uh, Suttles' car derives its power from pressure formed in a 68-foot coil of steel tubing. Then the steam is exhausted into a liquid reservoir where an automatic pump returns it to the form of water to the generators to be converted into steam again. Because of the steam principle, the car requires no gears of any kind, and Suttle believes that with his engine, <clears throat> he'll develop a greater land speed at 2,000 revolutions a minute then the conventional gasoline engine develops at 6,500. We're all anxious to see it in actual operation. What about the other new ideas you mentioned in this year's race, Wilbur? The most important stand is the tubular steel frame construction embodied in the Curtis Craft Special entered by Ed Walsh of St. Louis. The Germans, as you may know, were experimenting along this line before World War II. The Don Lee Mercedes Special, which was flown to this country for last year's race, had a frame of this type. But Walsh's entry this year is the first American-built car of similar design, and it will be watched with great interest. The same car also has been de uh, designed with torsion bar suspension both front and rear, a straight metal bar of special steel twisting slightly to absorb each shock. Does the same work as a coil spring or a leaf spring, and it will be no surprise if these two ideas are adapted to most passenger cars within a few years if they prove successful at Indianapolis. What's your opinion of these springs, Tom? I believe you're right, Wilbur. The automotive industry has been quick to accept many other innovations of former years at the Speedway, and both of these ideas seem to be practical. Yes, the Speedway still is a great outdoor laboratory of the automotive industry, and it's been a pleasure to hear Wilbur Shaw and Tommy Milton, two of the Roaring Road's outstanding heroes of former years, discuss the part, the annual...